Hi and welcome back to a new video. Don't be surprised because I'm shooting out of a new studio which I set up at Grizzly so I can also shoot videos from here. I'm not quite done yet when it comes to the background. Also the audio was not fully perfect. There is still some echo left which I'm still working on trying to get rid of it. But you can leave me a feedback down below what you think about uh, the new studio. Today we will talk about a hardware legend and this is a hardware legend video. So this is the 8800 GTX Aqua Tank from Asus. It was released in 2007, but the video itself will not be too much about the 8800 GTX. Because in my opinion, the 8800 GTX deserves an extra video. It's probably one of the biggest graphic card legends out there. The video itself will be more about the cooling solution. And this is what Asus back then called the Aqua Tank series. The cooler that is on there is actually a thermal take tight water cooling solution and Thermaltake made the tight water cooling solution in 2005. In 2006 the 8800 GTX was released and in 2007 then Asus came around with the Aquatank series. Are you looking for an affordable but powerful dedicated server? Then check out the new Hetzner AX42 which is just right for you. With the AMD Ryzen 7 Pro 8700GE octa-core CPU, 64GB DDR5 ECC memory and two 512GB Gen 4 NVMe SSDs, it gives you solid performance. And all this starting at just 46 euros per month. Thanks to the hourly billing, you also only pay as long as you actually rent the server. And if you need more performance, you can easily expand the memory and also the disk space. Hetzner operates several hundred thousands of servers in its own high-tech data centers and is known for its extraordinary price performance ratio, competent support and innovative in-house server solutions. Click on the link in the description below and check out Hetzner and the new AX42 server. The 8800 GTX, I think all of them had the same PCB. There were a lot of different cooling solutions. Most of them used a blower style type cooling solution. This one with the aqua tank, uh, same as all the others with a G80 chip, 768 megabyte of memory and PCIe Gen 1 X16 for PCI Express. And here a dual six pin power supply with a TDP of 155 watt. What I found quite interesting is the TDP on the card is 155 watt, whereas if you compare it with the Thermaltake tight water cooling solution, it's at max of 120 watts that this thing is capable of dissipating. But then again, if you further inspect the card, there is not only the GPU that has to be cooled, also in front we have the display output chip and also obviously the memory, also the VRM, and maybe those components add up to about maybe 35 watt. So it would fit perfectly when it comes to the max rated TDP that the tight water cooling solution was capable of cooling. But now the tight water. There were two different versions. You could differentiate them also by the number. This is the normal tight water. There was also the tight water plus, which featured dual output. So you could use it on two graphics cards. So that was back then when SLI and Crossfire was still a thing. Um, you could hook it up to two cards at once. If we look at the features, it tells us that it's a pure copper designed water block, which is good. It's an all copper designed radiator, which is also good. So everything seems to be made of copper, no material mix. That is pretty awesome. And black powerful 12 volt tiny pump. Tiny pump, probably important. Not sure why they directly mentioned that it's black. Maybe because it just fit inside a little bit more beautiful. On the back you can find additional technical information such as the set max 120 watt for the GPU. It also says that the noise level is between 17 and 19 decibel between 1700 and 3000 RPM. Not quite sure how they measured it if there is like such a small noise level difference between this high RPM difference, maybe they measured it from like 50 meters away. Not quite sure about that. Also interesting, the pump speed is listed with 72 liters per hour at 3400 RPM. 72 liters per hour is not that much. That's why I mentioned it because nowadays in a typical custom water cooling solution, you would probably have maybe two to three liters per minute. And the 72 liters per hour is like 1.2 uh, yeah, liters per minute. So that's not really that much, especially at 3400 RPM. Okay, and there you can also see this thing is sealed, brand new, even though it's almost 20 years old. Now if you take both of the cooling solutions, the one from the Aqua Tank and also the Thermaltake one, you can see it is fully identical. There's like no difference to those two at all. 
The only thing is that ASUS slapped the sticker on here and also on here to make it look a little bit nicer, even though I actually like the, yeah, the copper radiator that you can see in here. And also the cooling block is different. You can see this one was probably, yeah, changed a little bit from thermal take to fit on the 8800 GTX directly, whereas the normal tight water cooling solution had a universal water block that should fit on multiple cards. And I also want to fit it on a more recent card from today to see what the cooling capability and also yeah, the noise level of this thing was. You can also see that this has pretty much just the form factor of a normal graphics card, which was a nice way to add it into an existing system because it should usually fit in most of them. You can see this typically plugged into an expansion slot, but I'm not quite sure, maybe I can find the information, if this was meant to be plugged into PCIe or normal PCI or maybe also an AGP slot. That is something I still have to learn because it looks like maybe that's for not PCI Express. Yep, you can see it here. It was meant to be used in a normal PCI slot, not PCI Express. I'm not sure if we will be able to get it yeah, to work in a normal system, but it's just mechanical, you know. The structure is quite simple. We have a fan, we have a radiator, we have a reservoir and a pump in here. There's also a fill port if you want to add fluid. The fluid itself just looks like some automotive type fluid that was quite common back then. And typically those type of fluids worked quite well, even for a long period of time. You can see it still looks kind of okay. They were not the best when it comes to just the cooling performance because they typically add a lot of glycol. But apart from that, those types of fluid worked pretty well. We have four pin molex for power connection. Also, there is a switch on top for low and high speed. I'm not sure if it's just for the pump or the fan or maybe both together. But apart from that, there is nothing you can use to directly yeah, control the pump or the fan speed like over PWM. The mounting could also become an adventure, but that's something I will have to see. I set up a test rig so we can also compare the cooling performance of the Tidewater. This is 6700 XT. I picked it because it has a lower TDP and also a little bit smaller graphics chip. Otherwise, the cold plate might not fit on it. After a heat up phase of 15 minutes and the GPU pulling 185 watts, the GPU temperature is hitting 75, 76 degrees Celsius and the hotspot about 94 to 95 degrees Celsius. Should also be interesting because I can only cool the GPU itself with the tight water and VRMs and also the memory will not be directly cooled, but I will probably just put a fan in front, should work. The universal mounting is pretty simple, but should work. They're just those two pieces of metal, like those long hole things and guess that will be able to fit on here. There are a few dents and scratches in the cooling surface, but that should just work fine. What I find impressive though, is that this piece of copper is nickel plated and that was 2005. Now imagine ASUS didn't even manage to do that on the 4090 matrix. The only concern might be that you can only tighten it with two screws. So I have to be careful not to tilt it too hard, otherwise it could damage the chip, but I guess it could be all right. Apart from that, the mounting mechanism for its time is actually brilliant. This worked out much better than I initially thought. Mounting was very smooth, easy. I didn't tighten too much because I'm also not using a backplate right now. Didn't want to bend the PCB. Let's try. Graphics card is going to be the easy part. Now, the plastic fingers, as I said, they should be for PCI, not for PCI Express. Uh. Yeah, it wouldn't fit in a case because the position of the bracket is not correct, but at least this should be fine. Fan is spinning, I can also hear pump noise. In idle, first look, not that great. The GPU temperature seems to be a bit warm. The delta to hotspot is pretty small, so I think it should sit fine on the GPU, but maybe it's pump speed related or something. I already pointed this out earlier. There is a fan speed switch or like a speed switch on top. And in the low speed, this is pretty quiet. This is something you could use today, but high speed, yeah, it's a bit annoying. Right now, I'm not even sure if this is pumping at all. Back then you didn't have vertical mount. You only had horizontal mount. So I'm not even sure. 
the pump is doing anything. And that would also explain why the low water indicator is exactly this way. Earlier when I said I hear pump noise, I'm not even sure if that was just the AIO of the CPU because I also rechecked the footage. There was nothing moving inside the reservoir. I'm not even sure if the pump is working. You can also definitely feel that this was not built to be ever taken down again, like reopened. But I'm trying to get to the part to open the pump. I think when they assembled it, they also assembled everything first and then did the tubing because otherwise, yeah, it would be a lot easier to access the parts. Hmm? Oh yeah. Yeah, so there's, yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but there's some, some stuff. I think it's from the coolant, maybe after sitting there for 20 years, because it feels like some tiny pieces. Because I first thought that I killed it by running it dry, but looking at this, I'm not quite sure, because usually if you run it dry, you get more like a, a bearing damage, which would be in the center, not something that's stuck into the outside. Hmm. So also in here, you can see there is some weird stuff. It's definitely part of the coolant. I will try to clean this as much as possible. I'm not sure how much of this I can clean and also if this might affect the balance of the wheel afterwards. I will try my best. It's just rust in the end. It's a metal ring on the rotor of the pump and I think after sitting so long in the box it's just rust that appeared. You can at least spin it again. I will reassemble everything and test it. The problem right now is that there's air in the pump and I cannot seem to get the air out. I think I have to open the loop at one point to somehow drain it. I'm not sure. Not Well, not drain, but get the air out of the pump. I have some distilled water in the syringe. I'm just pushing it into the loop. And I think this should yeah, reach the pump and I might also fill a little bit in the tank itself. Test run. Only the pump is connected, no fan. We will try and see what happens. Still running dry. The pump seems to have some kind of electronic problem, I think. At least, I mean, it spins from time to time. This is really odd. Also, doesn't matter what I'm selecting on the switch. Hmm. Honestly, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to fix that. I think the only thing left to do is cleaning the pump with isopropanol alcohol and see if this helps anything dry it afterwards. Okay, next issue. I already saw it coming because of moving this so often. Yeah, the cable came loose, so I also have to fix this now. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, great. So pump is spinning again. Kind of fix that part. Now I don't want to run it dry for too long, otherwise it might kill the bearing. We'll reassemble everything. Uh-huh. Maybe like that. I can't even tell you how long this took to just get all the air out of the pump. It's finally working, but we can see a lot of tiny residues and stuff that is yeah, collecting in the reservoir, which is not a good sign because eventually this will be trapped somewhere in either the, the cooler or the pump. Right now you can see we have water flow. That is great, so we can finally do some testing. It would probably be best to fully disassemble the entire thing, clean everything, but the problem is because the thing is so old, the tubing on some ends is really brittle and especially here and here, I'm afraid if I bend it too much too often, that would just break, snap. So I think I won't touch it too much and we will just test it the way it is. I think we finally reached the state that it should work, hopefully. Everything is back together, 
if this doesn't work, then it's game over. That just took so much longer than I expected. I think I just spent four or five hours fixing this thing. It's finally up and running. We will jump into the gaming scene, check the temperature because I'm not quite sure how long this will last, especially with all the small particles floating inside there. I think it's just a matter of time until either the pump dies or something is getting blocked inside. All this work to have a hotspot temperature above 100 degrees Celsius, goddamn. Maybe if I adjust the fan speed. Switching to high fan speed. There's a lot of warm air coming out, so it's definitely working. I also made sure that the orientation this time won't yeah, let the pump run dry and there's only a little bit of water in the top area right here. I think typically it would be flipped 180 degrees, but that should be fine. Just put it onto small boxes and on the bottom and on top there's air intake. And the card, even without direct like VRM and memory cooling, should run fine. I think we lost some GPU clock, it's about 2520 and in the beginning it was 2550, 2560, probably because of the very high uh, GPU hotspot, 170 degrees Celsius, but it's still maintaining 185 watt. This also shows that nowadays air coolers are not even that bad, especially compared to older tech, but again, I mean this is almost 20 years old and for that age it performs quite well, especially if you compare it to the technology and also the TDP that was used back then. I also picked this because I randomly recently saw a post about a very similar cooling solution. I can't remember who posted this and which vendor it was, but they used the same principle of having an AIO or water cooling solution inside the expansion slot and then have it sit underneath the graphics card. So that is not a new concept almost 20 years old and as far as I know that was also the first AIO water cooling solution like this universal for a graphics card. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye bye.